quite a while ago, our um, our centerboard mechanism broke on Haraya here. She's a 1978 Tartan 34C. Drafts like three foot nine or something with the board up and almost, I think around eight feet with the board down. Um, we've been putting this project off for a long time. I mean, I think it broke like eight or nine months ago. But we've got some downtime, waiting on some other repairs. The engine's out of the boat. I got a little bit more access and we're gonna try to fix this mechanism. It should help us sail upwind a little bit better. We don't plan on doing a lot of upwind sailing, but it'd be nice to be as efficient as possible. And watching for dolphin. No? They're still out here going around the boat. Sounds like I'm on my own for the day. Jessica's on dolphin watching duty. <laughs> Dolphin duty. <laughs> Dolphin duty. <laughs> All right, let's get started on this thing. Let's see what we can do today. So our centerboard mechanism is behind the companionway steps, behind the ice maker. Oh, you can't see that. Well, there's my flashlight, and it's sitting right there. You can you control it from the cockpit? There's a little. You put a. There's a little winch handle you stick in there to raise it up and down. The joys of living in a tiny, tiny space. Ah, again. <laughs> Sorry. I really do love this life. <laughs> How's my hair? <laughs> you look great. Okay, let's go. <laughs> I used to just kind of work around stuff because I was lazy. And now after being on the boat for so long, I just know better. I just get everything out of the way to begin with because before the project's over, it's all going to be out of the way anyways. That includes me. <laughs> Sometimes, yes. <laughs> I'm in my hole. <laughs> out of the way. <laughs> out of the way. So this is the mechanism right here. It looks like the cable's wrapped around the winch. If you guys can see that. Yep, the cable's wrapped around the winch funny. It's all jammed up. Look at it. It looks terrible. It broke on the other end here. There's a spring down in here that this block went to and it, from what I can tell, it came unbolted and the whole mechanism went ting. And when we tried to lift the center board up, um, it just bound up this cable. Um, so we haven't, so I've actually had to tie it up with a little safety rope. This little, this is the center board arm. This is the rope I used. And I did this one night in Magdalena Bay in a storm. Oh, I'm sorry, in Bahia Tortuga, um, in Turtle Bay. The boat was hobby horse and pretty good, and this is the first time I think I've ever been seasick, is when I stuck my head below my butt and tried to pull that lever up to get our centerboard up. It was a bad time to do it, but we do what you gotta do. There we go. I don't know what is going on with this mess. Right, that, that thing is a disaster. I'm gonna to try to trace out the cables down below so I can see what's going on before I just tear that apart. I really have no directions on how to put this back together. So this is the this is the cable here. It looks like it runs through a double block down there. Underneath the set, underneath the bilge, or underneath the floor of the boat. So then it comes out to here and goes to this block. And this is what's come unthreaded, was this guy right here which attaches to a spring underneath this bilge pump down in there. And then goes back and this, this block goes to the center board, I think. I mean, that kind of makes sense in my head. I guess that's what we're gonna go with. Apparently we need to clean our boat. Dirty down here. I think it's stuck. Dirty bottom? Yep. Well, unfortunately the centerboard project um, is over before it even really got started.
there's so much, I don't know, probably muscles and growth inside that centerboard trunk from lack of use that it the board will not go down. So I untied the little safety rope I put on and we tried pulling on a little bit and the board didn't fall. So now we're, um, I guess we're gonna wait till the water warms up, maybe dive underneath the boat, see if we can't free it up some another day, get it all working. And if we can free it up, then we will mess with this centerboard mechanism some more. Otherwise, we'll probably end up doing it on the boatyard somehow. We would like it to work. Um, we don't use it often, obviously. I guess that was it. We're gonna clean up our mess real quick and find something else to do for the day. More dolphin watching. Dolph, more, more watching for dolphin. Seems how we can't finish our boat project, we're gonna go pit, play the most dangerous game in the world pickleball we've never done it we don't know the rules so we looked them up real quick so we're gonna go see <laughs> how this is gonna go get my shoes on maybe Sam will get his on and then he's going down he's gonna get paddled We've been sitting in Escondido for a while now waiting on our engine to be repaired and it's becoming increasingly obvious that we are getting bored. You know we got plenty of stuff we should be doing like maybe varnishing our boat or sanding or doing some sort of maintenance you know we could polish stainless we got plenty we could do but why would we want to do that that doesn't sound like fun at all but we're getting so bored Jessica's actually in there sewing. So trying something new while we're bored and sitting here waiting for our motor and wasting time, really, I've decided to sew. And if you've been watching any of our other videos, you know that all the sewing that's been done on the boat has been done by Sam. I help when I can, um, but it usually ends up with me screaming and saying some bad words and messing up and Sam just seems to have a knack for it. So he does much better. So he saves me a lot of times from doing that. So yesterday I had gotten my little kit out that I had bought from Celerite a long time ago and tried to do it. And it mostly turned out okay. Kind of like um, maybe one step up from um, middle school home ec. <laughs> I only have one little error that's like off, didn't actually line up as well as it should have been, but I think I can actually use this bag and it won't fall apart the very first time I use it. And it's pretty sturdy. And if I don't use it for groceries, I'm sure I can find something else to use it for. So thank goodness for YouTube <laughs> and all the how-to videos. I did a step-by-step -step instructional video on how to do the first bag with using my own little supplies and I'm going to kind of follow those same those same steps again to make this other bag. This soapstone stick is going to be the death of me. I don't know where the case is and I keep losing this little thing. I know where the case is. She just hasn't asked me for it yet. I asked him yesterday and he didn't know where it was. So I asked once. I couldn't hear her because I don't remember her asking me. <laughs> remember when Sam said it was just moments of being less annoyed? I asked him for this yesterday. He didn't know where it was, but today he conveniently doesn't remember that I asked him for it and just pulled it like right out of his pocket. Yeah. So if I measure one inch, then I can fold it in half. That would be a half inch hem. And it should be okay that way. 
I once tried to, well, actually I tried it a couple times, but I tried to make curtains for my baby's rooms when they were born because I was going to make these cute little nurseries. It didn't go over so well. So I'm going to take my time and not freak out. This is going to be fine. We are making up stuff to do. Jessica doesn't like sewing. She's probably glaring at me in there. Ah, she can't even hear me, so that's good. All right, anyway, she's sewing. I'm sitting here bored out of my mind, and I got thinking, earlier this year, we met this other cruiser. Um, his name was Ethan, and he is really into decorative, really salty, nautical, like, knot work. Any gave me the name of this book and told me the name of some knots I should try. Cause I'm like, oh, that's really cool. I would love to learn how to do some of that stuff, you know? Cause we have some spare time here on Haraya. Um, when you're sailing and you just, you can just sit here and he just does this knot work while he's on passage. Well, I thought I'd try it today. It is much, much harder than it looks. Um, I spent three hours, I think, on YouTube and trying to figure out how to tie a Turk's head at the center of our helm to mark dead top dead center. Man, I suck. It was terrible. I struggled and I struggled and I struggled and I finally pretty much gave up. And this is what I came up with. It's just some sort of braiding. I don't know what it is. I got frustrated with it and I think it looks okay. This is it. You know, nothing fancy. It is nice though to know the center of the helm by feel, not even have to look down there when you're helming the boat. Um, so it'll be handy. <laughs> I run the sewing machine like I do the dinghy. I start out okay, and then I get really fast, and I get really slow. <laughs> not bad, huh? <laughs> They hold groceries. <laughs> Can't even see my screw up on the pocket. Well, maybe it wasn't that one. I'm actually kind of impressed. They're not very matching, but I'm ready. Let's go get provisions. I decided I'm not a quitter. I may not be very good at something, but I'm not a quitter. So I took another hour and I finally tied my first Turk's head knot, a proper Turk's head. And I tied it on our fish whacker thing, our little billy club. Check this out. I'm pretty happy with it. I'm not happy with how long it took me. I don't know if I will continue to try to do knot work. I really should. It's really cool. Um, I will probably one day redo the one at the helm. Not today. I, my frustration level is already too high. I can't. There's no way I can do it today. But I will readdress this one day. It may be a few years. You know, this is part of the reality of cruising. Sometimes you're just bored out of your mind, nowhere to go because something happens. And now I have to find another project. It is only noon. I gotta find something else to do.